Okay, what's up? Good morning. Let's get this started. Let's get this going. So, late on October 24th, Nate Diaz, Stockton's own bad boy, was pulled. Well, pulled. He more with. When the news broke, we thought he pulled, or we thought he was pulled. Which, later on, I'll get into that. But Nate Diaz essentially withdraws from welterweight title clash with Jorge Gamebred Masvidal, scheduled for November 2nd at Madison Square Garden, for the promotion's brand new championship belt, the baddest motherfucker in the game belt. Diaz had returned after a three years hiatus from the sport after his controversial loss to the notorious Conor McGregor at UFC 202 to defeat a surging Anthony Showtime Pettis in a three round bout a few months prior. Everyone kind of. Everyone in the anticipation to that fight, everyone thought Pettis is just going to brutalize Diaz. He's been out for too long. The controversial loss to McGregor probably did something to him. But after a three years layoff, he comes back and just mauls Pettis for three rounds. To put himself back in the title race. And on the other end. Uh, Gamebred Masvidal was on risk of being cut. Only winning two of his last four. Until he got a vicious knockout. Of the gorilla Darren Till at UFC London. In March 16th. Following that in UFC 235. He got the fastest knockout in combat sports history. Over Ben Askren. A whopping five seconds. Not counting. or That's including counting the time. Where the ref had to run over and pull him off. So safe to say this bout was highly anticipated. As the news broke, uh, Diaz broke the news himself despite being told not to by uh, unknown sources. Diaz took to Twitter claiming y'all are on steroids, not me. Among other things we expected to hear from the Stockton bad boy. It was clear that Diaz seemed adamant that the results were due to tainted supplements, which he didn't specify, but even Masvidal himself took to Twitter calling Diaz the cleanest motherfucker in the game. The boxing ace and prolific knockout artist released his official statement shortly after, saying, I'll see you November 2nd, implying the bout's cancellation, cancellation is not official, which most of us would be led to believe that it was, because Diaz, see, he phrased it in such a way where he said, I'm not making it to, uh, I'm not making it to Madison Square Garden for 244. Uh, most thought that he had failed the USADA drug test and was not allowed to fight, but Re in reality, he is allowed to fight, which I'll get into now in a moment. But Diaz was found to have extremely elevated levels. That's the quote he released on his Twitter. He didn't specify of what in his system, which he had already claimed was due to the tainted supplements, as he is he's a very known clean fighter advocate, and he's also a known vegan. So he claims he's never been, he's never once been uh, had a bad test, basically. Information was released shortly after then by Ariel Helwani on the MMA Hour. Shortly after, uh, Ariel states that the bout might not be cancelled, but Diaz refuses to compete with the knowledge that the bout will be overturned to a no contest if he were to win. Or if he were to lose, uh, we don't know how, we don't know what the judges are, we don't know what the USADA State Commission, all that. To In layman's terms, if the bout, if he were to go ahead with the bout and win, he would not get the title and the bout would be overturned to a no contest to nobody's pleasure. So he obviously Diaz doesn't seem he doesn't see the point in competing when there's nothing to win. Like there's nothing on the line. If it's if we know what's going to happen, it's going to be overturned to a no contest. Possible replacements are being looked at for the bout if uh, they can't convince Diaz to come around. Uh, some names have been thrown out there, like Leon Rocky Edwards, who's an obvious, he's in the, he's a top five contender. Uh, the fans don't seem to want this one, as Rocky isn't a very exciting fighter, and he doesn't suit the bill for the great big Madison Square Garden title fight. Obviously, uh, the notorious Conor McGregor comes to mind, if he can make the 170, 170 pound limit in a, a week. And it's a shame because the bout was so highly anticipated by fans and everybody around the world and it was set to be a huge pay-per-view sellout uh, considering how stacked the card is with talent from top to bottom. Especially with the knowledge that we would have a new... Well, technically a new champion as it's not a new weight belt. Or weight, like it's not a new weight class belt. It's a new belt that, um, as they put it, determines who's the baddest motherfucker in the game. 
So although it might not give them champion status, it is still a championship belt. So unless a replacement can be found, the event is at risk of not like not being cancelled because the UFC takes countermeasures that they always have fighters that are ready to um ready to step in if someone were to pull out. Um notoriously uh Habib Nurmagomedov pulled out against uh, his title clash with Tony Ferguson at UFC 184, I believe, and he was stepped in uh, Kevin Lee, only to be submitted by Ferguson in the fourth round for Ferguson's first uh, interim title. So what this means is the, the event is not at risk of being cancelled at all. It's just at risk of being a pay-per-view bomb because that the main event obviously is what the people are paying for it's the two baddest guys in the game fighting and if you replace one of them with a fighter who many consider not to be bad at all it's it doesn't have the same hype to it that we were expecting um the advertising for this one had all been around centered around being bad and being a bad boy and who's just who's like we expected a brawl we didn't really expect a technical fight from these two men but also, you have to ask the question, where does this leave Nate Diaz if he doesn't compete on November 2nd? Obviously, Masvidal will fight whoever, and depending on the winner or loser, Masvidal could go on to fight for the inaugural welterweight title, and the loser could... And even if Masvidal loses, he's just put down a couple of ranks. If Diaz doesn't compete, though, this could put him out of the title race for sure, because you have so many solid contenders like Leon Edwards, uh... Tyron, former former champion Tyron Woodley and Colby Chaos Covington. So they'd be pushed down the rankings, but like it, it's an if he he needs to work out this issue with the Athletic State Commission that he if he can guarantee that the fight will not be overturned to a no contest, then I'm sure he'd have no problem competing. Because even though he was found to have elevated levels, we all know he's clean. Diaz is just, he's Diaz, everyone knows he's clean. Dustin Poirier, uh, just coming off a title loss to Habib Nurmagomedov, took to Twitter saying um, he hashtagged fuck Nate Diaz, which I most thought wasn't very classy of him because they did have a scheduled bout before Diaz's return, but Diaz um, promptly walked away and that bout was cancelled, so I can understand why Poirier would be upset that he's pulling out again. E even though... See, it's an interesting one because if they fight and Diaz wins, does it justify being a no contest? Because we know he's clean, but at the same time, we have these elevated substances, so we don't exactly know if it will enhance his performance or not. And I don't think Masvidal would argue that, like, if Masvidal lost, he's not going to sit there and say, oh, Diaz this, Diaz that, like, Diaz dirty. He's too... They, they're both just straight up gangsters. Like they know they're gonna fight. They know one of them's gonna lose, and they don't care. Like they just want to get in there and scrap. For them, it's less about the title, and it's more about, it's more about the uh, lineal, the lineal, not the, not the actual belt title, but the title of being the baddest motherfucker in the division, which has really caught the eye of so many other contenders who are jumping this bandwagon of oh I'm I'm bad as well. Uh, especially uh, Conor McGregor taken to Twitter claiming all sorts of nonsense that he created the bad belt and that he is a bad motherfucker, but he's, he's clearly not. He just isn't. So I think this is a very special event between these two fighters. They're most, they're incredibly famous for just being straight up brawlers. They, they, uh, they're not very technical. They just go out there and they scrap. So to have one of them pull out, it just doesn't seem like a bout that could have a replacement, if that makes any sense. Whereas usually if someone is forced to withdraw from an event, uh, they will always have a backup to send in. But this is such a unique event that it's not for an inaugural title. It's for a unique once-off uh, title that having a replacement doesn't make any sense. I'd sooner have the bout moved unless, like, if they could find a new main event... The co-main event, uh, by the way, is um, Darren the Gorilla Till faces Kelvin Gastelum in a three-round middleweight bout, which on its own I don't think is enough to be a main event. So unless they can put together a new event very quickly that will 
justify making the 244 card worth paying for so they can reschedule Masvidal versus Diaz. I really don't see I really don't see um you know how how this event can be salvageable if Diaz doesn't doesn't like if, if we can if they cannot convince him to come back. Anyway, that's what I think. I think that I think that the event the event should not go through. It shouldn't. It sh it simply shouldn't go through without Diaz, without without one or the other. You know. Um, well, that's all from me now. I'll be back with you with the results of the event, and then we'll take it from there, and we'll discuss where everyone goes from there. If Diaz competes, if he doesn't compete, where does that leave Masvidal? Where does Masvidal go? And where does this all put Conor McGregor? I've been a guy, and you've been listening to a podcast. Thank you.